your kids car seats are installed correctly. This is for you later today. You're going to have a chance to have the experts check them out for free in Albuquerque. News 13 Samantha McDonald is live downtown with the details. Good morning, Samantha. Matt, this event makes it easy for parents to make sure their kids are strapped in correctly in the car. The free clinic is brought to you by the Department of Transportation and the nonprofit group Safer New Mexico Now. From 4 to 6 p.m., there will be certified technicians on hand at Kohl's at the Cottonwood Corners Shopping Center to show you how to properly install those child safety seats. As you can see here, many car seats will need adjusting. In fact, technicians tell me that three out of four car seats nationwide are not set up correctly. The straps may be too loose or the car seat may be expired. The organizers of the event say every little detail matters in the case of an accident. Well, in a motor vehicle crash, it's going to protect your child, uh, shield them from, uh, from any harm. If your child is under the age of seven and weighs less than 60 pounds, you are required by state law to put your child in a car seat. Matt, back to you. All right, thank you, Samantha. That's great advice there. The American Pediatric Association recommends you keep your car seat facing backward for at least two years. Developing now this morning, the MDC should have its massive overcrowding problem fixed by a deadline next Saturday, or so says Bernalillo County's leaders. The county is expected to ship off 113 more inmates by tomorrow. That should bring the jail close to its legal capacity of 2,236 inmates. Now, yesterday, there were 2,368 inmates there, still a few too many. The county is confident it will avoid a fine from a federal judge, but Deputy Public Safety Manager Tom Swistak says now the real work begins to figure out who the county should keep in jail. How do we let people back into the community that are maybe high needs and not high risk, that are mental health, that are substance abuse users, but really need services? If the jail is still overcrowded on September 1st, a federal judge could fine the county, but has not said how much that could be. Well, the cleanup is going to continue today at a charter school in Albuquerque after it was set on fire and tagged last night. Fire started about 11:15 Saturday night in a shed at the Mountain Mahogany Charter School that burned playground and athletic equipment. Plus, whoever did this spray painted the school with graffiti. And as you can imagine, this is going to be quite expensive to go clean up. We suspect that it might be just kids um, just just messing around and, and you know finding a place you know just to. No, no, we have no, no ideas. Yeah, firefighters have no ideas either. They're still trying to figure out who started that fire. And when it comes to regular schools in Albuquerque, a new report shows they are doing much better financially than they did a few years ago. The Albuquerque Journal is reporting that Moody's Investor Services upgraded the district to a AA1 with a stable outlook. Now, that's a lot better than three years ago when Moody said the district had a negative outlook. Now, the reason for the change, and this is what matters to you, the district now has $36 million in a savings account and has had the same chief financial officer for the past three years. Well, today, we should learn more about someone who was found dead in a home in northeast Albuquerque this weekend. Homicide detectives are investigating after police found this person not breathing at a home here on La Beta Drive. It's near Lomas and San Mateo. They've not said who the person is or exactly how the person died. Sad story here. Two soldiers stationed at White Sands Missile Range here in New Mexico are dead, killed in Afghanistan this weekend. Specialist Kenneth Alvarez and Private Jonathan Hostetter died in a roadside bomb explosion on Friday. Both of them were clearing roads of IEDs to improvise explosive devices when they were killed. They were part of the 40th Mobility Company. Specialist Alvarez was 23 and from California, and Private Hostetter was 20 years old and from Missouri. That there's still some very dedicated young people out there, very patriotic, willing to serve their country and willing to die for their country and given, like you said, given the ultimate sacrifice. The 40th Mobility Company was deployed in January. It's set to be in Afghanistan until the end of this year. Certainly honorable, those two young men did. All right, the mom who was out shopping with her teenage son in Albuquerque when police say she was caught stealing and with drugs on her is still in jail this morning. Terry Hernandez Aragon was in court yesterday on drug and child abuse charges. Police say she tried to steal makeup from the Walmart on Coors at Saturday. Security stopped her, and when police got there, they say they found meth in her purse. Hernandez Aragon needs 750 bucks in cash to get out of jail. 
Well, a man in southern New Mexico is in a lot of trouble this morning, accused of calling his ex more than 100 times in one night and telling her he had a bullet with her name on it. Hobbs police say this man, Bernard Pritchard's, was ex had filed a restraining order against him last Wednesday. That night, she told police Pritchard called her saying, quote, I have a 357 Magnum and a bullet with your name on it. Next night, cops say Pritchard called his ex-girlfriend 125 times, shouting and whistling on voicemail messages. After that, Pritchard was arrested and charged with aggravated stalking. 506 new this morning, a tribe in western Arizona is blasting the idea of drilling near the Chaco Cultural National Historical Park. That would be eastern Arizona, I apologize. Farmington Daily Times says the Hopi tribe is pushing the Bureau of Land Management to not allow the drilling by the World Heritage Site. Oil and gas companies want to drill on that land. The BLM will have the final say. The tribe says its ancestors lived on that land years and years ago. A family in Rio Rancho is now asking that city to help pay a portion of repairs to damage caused to their property after last month's huge rainstorm. Paul Miller filed an insurance claim against the city after water rushed onto his property from a major storm back in July, knocking down a retaining wall that destroyed his front yard. But the city of Rio Rancho's insurance sent Miller a letter denying a claim to pay for that flood damage. Miller says he has the money to clean it up and he's already started to fix it, but he says he shouldn't be stuck with the bill, which is already costing about 6000 bucks. It's not like I'm trying to get something for free out of them because I can fix this myself. We're asking for them to pay a portion of the damage costs. The adjusters told the family the next course of action would likely be filing a lawsuit. Now we tried to get Rio Rancho to talk about this, but the city said it doesn't comment on pending insurance claims.